the brokers. I welcome you all. Share the brokers. Hallelujah. I welcome you all once again. If today is your first time of connecting me, my name is Precious Apia Gifty. You can call me the Lioness. Lioness preacher. When I sit on the seat of Moses, I speak the truth. Hallelujah. Ever since I did a video about our late Papa T.B. Joshua, I've been receiving a lot of comments, a lot of questions, a lot of people. I want to use this opportunity to clear the air. I want to use this opportunity to clear the air. Let us pray. Spirit of the living God, I bless you. I lift your name on high. Come and do the, what only you can do. I bind all powers and forces that are against the gospel. Father, I command every power that is assigned to cause interruption. Let all these powers be arrested. I release your mighty angels. Let your angels be on guide. In the name of Jesus Christ, let me speak of your will and let me speak of your counsel. Take me your will and give me much of yours. In Jesus Christ's mighty name, I pray. Hallelujah. Ever since I did a video about our Papa T.B. Joshua, the day he died, a lot of people, they are not okay. You know, there are some people, when they say they hate you, they hate you even to your grave. There are some people, when they say we do not like you, even in your grave, they still not like you. It doesn't matter how you explain yourself. It doesn't matter how you speak to them. It doesn't matter how you treat them. The fact that they've decided not to like you, they hit you to the grave. Even in your grave, they hit you. Hallelujah. When I did the video, I explained that I am not a member of the church, of, of the synagogue church of all nations. I explained for people to understand that I do not know Prophet T.B. Joshua anywhere. I have not once attended his meetings before. I have not even met him physically. I haven't met him before. In the realms of the spirit, I've been meeting many men of God. God didn't give me the chance to meet him. I do not know much about this man. Many of you are forcing me to say whether he was genuine or whether he was fake. The truth of the matter is that now the late prophet is gone. We can say whatever we say we want to say. We can explain whatever we want to explain. He is gone. And according to my encounter that I've been sharing all the time to people, I don't speak bad about somebody that is dead. No matter what. No matter what, I have learned to speak good about people that are gone. Because... The reason being that for they, they have no where they are now. But you and I, do we know where we are? Our late Papa, now he know where he is now. If all what he was doing on earth, and if it was divinely, now he is resting. He is resting in eternity. So why should we sit on earth to still condemn him even after his death? Why should we still keep the hatred that we have for him while he's still resting in his grave? 
why the soul is resting, whether in the bosom of Abraham or in the hellfire. For that, I will not spare the truth. If he died as a God's servant, now the angels that came for him as people are claiming. Because I've been explaining to you, when you see angel, when I die and an angel come for me, don't, don't let it surprise you. We have angels for the devil and we have angels for God. Remember, Revelation chapter 12, when the devil was coming on earth, the Bible says he brought one third of the angels, the messengers in the kingdom of God. So as I'm seated here, if I'm working for the devil, if I've been signed, if I have been assigned by the devil to operate at this end time, and I do it well to win so for him, when I die, the angel of devil, the angel of Satan will come and pick me into the bosom of my father, that is Satan himself, Lucifer. The same thing applies to genuine workers of God, genuine men of God, genuine daughters of God, genuine sons of God. If you die today, God will assign angels, and these angels will come and carry you to the bosom of Father Abraham. Hallelujah! As you all believed. So many of you, don't let this confuse you. We should let the death rest. I do not know TB Joshua anywhere. I have not attended his church. I quite remember the first time I heard about this man of God. It was on national television in Ghana. I cannot recollect uh, the, the, the actual date. But he came and did a program in Ghana, Accra. And because of how the place was overcrowded, I think one of his shelters, it collapsed. And it killed a group of people in Ghana. That was the first time I heard about TV Joshua. Many of you that are, that are writing in the comment section in YouTube that you now believe that it is D.B. Joshua that has given me power. Hey, let me tell you, I don't know that man anywhere. I didn't want to reply comments, but I want to clear the air. And many of you that is saying, J. Israel has, has, has bribed me, has, ha, he gave me a way to come and say to defend him. I don't give a damn to whosoever you are. I don't care your position. I don't need anything from you. And I don't have time to come and speak for you. I speak as God delivers the message to me. I speak as God gives me the chance to see. And I speak as I see. If I don't see, I have a lot of things to teach. I will never come and lie. So I want to clear the air. I'm not a spiritual daughter of Prophet T.B. Joshua. I'm not a church member of Prophet T.B. Joshua. I do not know where that man of God is now. I can't tell you whether he's in hellfire or he's in heaven or in paradise. God has not given me that chance to see him. If I see him, I will come and tell you where he is. But the father I've not seen him, I will not talk about him. That is it. Whether he was genuine, whether he was fake, it is you. Those men of God that are fake, they are fake. And they are able to get a chance to operate. They are able to get a chance to manipulate people because you yourself, you have decided not to, not to obey the voice of your God. You have decided not to obey the voice of God. So if you do not obey the voice of God, definitely you are going to obey the voice of the devil. That is why you find yourself in the hand of a wrong man of God. Or you find yourself in the hand of a charlatan. I sit out here. I don't have anything to do with charlatans. I don't even, I don't, I cannot even go and marry with them without exposing them. I can't go because... God Almighty has given us the power. He has given us power that when somebody is sick, by laying of hands on that person, that person will get well. God didn't say when somebody is sick, we should go and look for uh, oil or your rice. We should go and look for sabrosos. We should go and look for uh, uh, bundles. We should go and look for miracle waters. We should go and look for healing waters. 
God Almighty says, according to James chapter 5, verse 14 to 16, He said, Is anyone among you sick? Let the elders of the church lay hands on that person. And if that person has offended, his sins shall be forgiven. It is you that have adopted bundles. It is you that have adopted stickers. It is you, your ignorant, your ignorant, that they are using miracle waters to deceive you. It is your ignorant. That is why you go and swim in a pool and pay thousand dollars. While God has given you power as a child of God. The book of John chapter 1 verses number 11 to 12. The Bible says he came on his own. But his own received him not. But unto them that received him. He gave them power to be called out sons of God. Romans chapter 8. Verses number 30 going. You can know that when you cling to God, nothing can separate you from God. And when you move with God, nothing can hurt you because you are under his shadow. It is you. It is you that have agreed to receive coconut for healing. It is you that have agreed to receive banana for healing. It is you that have agreed to buy one apple for five hundred dollars it is you that have agreed to what they are doing you have concorded if you do not agree their fakeness will be in their in their chambers they wouldn't get anybody to dupe but because you yourself from the crown of your head down to your toe everything is fake you can't get a genuine man mm -mm. You can't get a genuine woman of God. You finally find yourself in the hand of fake people. Because your hair on your head is fake. The eyelashes you are carrying now is fake. Your lips is fake. Your toe nail, nails, the nails on your toes, it is fake. Everything is fake on you. How can you get in contact with a genuine person? You definitely find yourself in the, in, in the hand of one of your master's or your father's children. That is who you call the charlatans. That is who we call the charlatans. So leave the man alone. I don't speak about the deaf. Last time I was sharing to you. About a series of encounters that I have. With those that are dead. Revelation that I had. About a lady. That was being sponsored by a young man. In his senior high school, it is that young man that took that took care of her. After she finished senior high school, it was this young man that assisted her financially for her to get access into university. When she finished her university, she decided to say that man is not his category of man that he wants. He never married that man. I cannot say if it is the cases of that man. That made that lady fell into what she fell into. She was crossing away, away. She was crossing the road. And she was being knocked down by a car. She was being knocked down by a car physically. And she died. They buried her. After one month. It was one month exactly. I saw in a revelation. This lady appeared to me. And told me I should come and tell that his fiancé that everything that he has, she has done against him, he should find a place in his heart to forgive her. Because the more he is talking about the pains that she has deposited in his heart, the more they are torturing her there. It was an encounter. I didn't go to heaven. It was in somewhere in Kumase that I met that lady in a dream. And she was telling me this thing that I'm telling you. She said, the more the, the man's family are talking evil about her, the more she's been tortured in the place that she is. Though she didn't tell me the place that she is, whether it was hellfire or it was hedges, she said she's going through a lot of torturing. A lot of torturing. So I should go and tell the young man that took care of her, 
that she was ungrateful to and should go and tell that young man he should find a place in his heart to forgive her. And I wake up. So as I was telling the family, the one of the old woman, she explained things and I understood that even our death, when we are gone, how we talk about the person, how we talk about the person, it really affects the person wherever he is. That is why I said, let the death rest. Leave the death alone. The legacy that late prophet T.B. Joshua left, if it was a good legacy, this is what we have to correct. The legacy, those that have succeeded him, those that have taken his seat, operating in his thought, like Elijah and Elisha. What Elijah left for Elisha was what he managed. So the legacy that the late prophet T.B. Joshua left for the church, this is what we must focus and correct it if there is any error. But we should let the man go. So many of you that are trooping to my the comment section in my inbox telling me you I don't I don't I don't understand the reason why you call yourself a genuine woman of God and you, you, you speak good for Prophet TB Joshua. Should I curse him? Is he my father? Is he my church member? Or is he my spiritual father? Or is he my pastor? He's nothing to me. So why should you want me to condemn somebody that he has not even stepped on my foot? Somebody that my family don't even know him. If he has something wrong against you, you have to deal it yourself. I'm not your spokesperson. Hello? I am not your spokesperson. If he had anything wrong with you, if you think he did something against you and your family, you can sue the family in court. The law will speak for you, even in his absence. By you taking... Uh, uh, like attacking anybody that you hear the name of that, that man of God in their lips it is so bad and if you, you yourself if you don't repent that thing will take you to hell that thing will take you to hell we must repent we must repent me I don't hate any man of God though. I do not hate any woman of God I'm a messenger if I deliver your message and you have anything to talk about it, go to God. Go to God. Because I didn't send myself. It is God that said, go and say it. And I go and say it. It is God that said, go and do it. This and I do it. I'm just a messenger. So if you have anything wrong with the messages that I deliver, hello, please go before God. Fight with God. Give him all the bros that you wish you want to give to him. Give him everything that you want to give to him because he sent me. I didn't send myself. Hallelujah. It is quite time we seek the face of God on something. It is quite time you seek the direction of God before you do anything. Many of you that are mad, the, the prophet did this to me. He did this to my family. Did you seek the face of God before even taking a, a, a plane ticket, buying a plane ticket to go to Nigeria to attend his ministry? Did you seek the face of God? God has given you power. God has given you authority to draw closer to him, to come to him in prayer anytime, any moment. Did you seek the face of God? Is it God that directed you to that man of God? Is it God Almighty that spoke to your heart to go there? It is your attention, attention going around after yelling about any spiritualist you want to go there. After hearing that, oh, this spiritualist is so powerful. This man of God, a lot of miracles. After hearing testimonies, you don't go down your knee as a child of God to ask God, Lord, is this person from you? Was this person chosen by you? Lord, should I go? You don't seek God's opinion in everything you do. That is why you find yourself in problem. So stop blaming people. It is your ignorance. Stop blaming people. It is you yourself. Begin to blame yourself. Why you can't stop sinning and leave writers for the Holy Spirit to assist you? Why you can't stop that, that fornication? Why you can't stop that gossiping? Why you can't stop 
that, 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 that envy, jealousy, hatred, backbiting, why you cannot stop for the Holy Spirit to visit you to do as you, you, you speak in your chambers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That man of God is gone. If he was fake, I tell you, if he was fake, the spirit that he was using, it is still living. Because spirit don't die. That is the truth. When, when Elijah died, Elijah never go with the spirit. The spirit that God has given to him, he left it for Elijah. Elisha began to operate. When she died, when he died, he thought he can carry you to the grave. He carried the anointing. He never gave it to anybody. And even in his grave, the Bible said a man was dead. They were going to bury that man. And they saw raiders coming. So because of the fear, they did not bury that man. They threw that man away. They threw him away and he went and failed. On the grave of Elisha. By the falling of the grave, the spirit entered into that dead man and he came back to life. So if any man of God or any charlatan dies, he doesn't go with the spirit. If any witchcraft dies, she doesn't go with the spirit. If any wizard dies, he doesn't go with the spirit. Any of you once upon a time heard about Osama bin Laden? Osama bin Laden. When you go back to history, you heard about a man called King Nebuchadnezzar. The spirit of King Nebuchadnezzar is what Osama bin Laden used. Spirit do not die. It transfers from generation to generation. So you do your best to get the spirit of God. Because the Bible says those that do not have his spirit are not his. So ask yourself, do you have the spirit of God? Instead of you busy finding a way and means to condemn somebody, begin to condemn your life. Begin to condemn that bad attitude that is making it difficult for the Holy Spirit to live in you. Because the Holy Spirit doesn't live in an arm robber. Hey, hey. The Holy Spirit doesn't live in a masturbator. You masturbate, you're busy condemning people. The Holy Spirit doesn't live in a witchcraft. Somebody that is possessed. You are already with a spirit. How can you get a genuine spirit? You are already with a corrupt spirit. How can you get a genuine spirit? You must first of all reject that spirit of witchcraft before the Holy Spirit can enter into you and use you. So it's better you work on your salvation. As Apostle Paul told the people, work on your salvation with fear and trembling. Work on your salvation with fear and trembling. Because a day is coming, you also go as our papa is gone. Many of you in the comment section, you say you don't understand. Many of you in the comment section, you people say you do not understand why I say he was an icon. Oh, the truth must be told. Oh. The truth must be told. The fact that he is not my papa doesn't mean I should. I must first of all speak about your good deeds. I must first of all talk about the good thing you are doing. The bad thing is, be, is, is between you and your God. The bad aspect it is between you and your God. According to the book of Revelation, before God Almighty, Revelation chapter 2 and Revelation chapter 3, the message that God Almighty gave to the seven churches, before he will speak about your, your bad deeds, he first of all recommend you. Let me read a scripture to you. Let me read a scripture to you. The book of Revelation, a network is crazy now. Revelation chapter 2, Revelation chapter 2, verse number 1. Listen. It said, Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus, write these things. Said he that holdeth the seven star in his right hand, 
who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlestick, I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how thou cannot bear them which are evil and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not and has found them liars it said and has borne and has patience and for my name's sake has labored and has not fainted listen it said nevertheless i have somewhat against thee first of all when god wants to rebuke somebody he first of all recommend the good thing the person is doing the pastor that was in charge of the church of ephesus though he was doing something that god did not like but first First of all, God recommended the good thing that he was doing. He said, I know your patience. I know how you've labored and not fainted because of me. I know how you hate sinners. But I have something against you. Upon all these things that you are doing, you still have one thing to correct. Listen. He said, nevertheless, I have some water against thee because thou hast left thy first love. Remember therefore from whence when, thou art fallen and repent and do the first works or else I will come unto thee quickly and will remove the candlestick out of his place except thou repent. Hallelujah. Yes. The gift of God all the time when you hear people saying the gift of God is of no repentance. Oh, who is calling? I'm like when we say the gift of God is of no repentance, it is true. When God gives you his gift, he will never take it from you. But the light, the power inside, you will take it. Except to repent, you will never give the light that is supposed to shine, the strength, the support that you used to operate. The reason why, let me tell you the reason why Many men of God today that we are condemning, they were called genuinely. Let me tell you, I sit at here. If no, if God doesn't strengthen me, I can fall at any time. I'm a human being. I'm not better than those that have fallen. Those that have fallen, they used to preach more than I preach. Those that are falling now, they were, they were, they were, they were, they, they were able to perform miracles more than I am able to perform. Do you know what caused them to fall? Do you know what caused them to backslide? Many of you that your pastors have backslided. Many of you that your prophetess has backslided. Many of you that your lady reverence have backslided. That you do not want us to correct them. You want them to die in that carnality and worldliness. You do not want us to correct them. How God said, I have set you watchman over your people. Who are our people? Those that call the name of the Lord. Those that have been given power to be called sons and daughters of God. They were once called by God. Many of them, it is hardship that made them backslided. Many of them, money to pay their rent was difficult. Many of, many of them, frustration in ministry pushes them to join those occultic group. To join those illuminati group. To join those sisterhood and brotherhood. To join those, all these kinds of secret groups. It is hardship that drove them to do it. Because many of the church members today, they are ready to receive from you, but they are not ready to assist you. They want to call you 24-7, be there for them. Some of them, when they even call you, let me tell you the red truth that causes men of God and genuine men of God to backslide, to go and join those secret groups. Many people want to call you 24-7. They don't care how you manage to get money to buy data. To even be calling them, picking their calls every day. They don't care. Just giving you a penny to support or to assist yourself. No, they, they have that mindset that you got it free and you must give freely but they don't care about your physical needs they don't care that you've sacrificed you've stopped working you stopped doing so many things just to be there for them just to just for them to get to when they need you because sometimes some people call you and they don't get you and they are so angry 
when you later call them they say hey I, I needed you this is how some of you some of them will reply you I needed you now it is already damaged why are you calling now they don't know even that time that you were offline maybe you did not even have data to come online but they don't care about it as far as you are a man of God you must get money by force you must get data by force your bundle must be all the time on your strength must be all the time intact that is the mindset of the church members so many of your pastors due to frustration and you know after they join this secret group they don't have mercy again they don't have compassion again the remaining is duping you. They don't care whether you are a tomato seller. <laughs> ah, you pay thousand before you get closer to them. They don't care whether you are homeless. If you need them, you have to book an appointment of five hundred dollars before you can get access to speak to them. Yes. So it is hardship that drives many of these genuine servants of God to go and worship the spirit of mammon. Yes. It is hardship, it is difficulties, it is the frustration in ministry. Many of them, they've established a church. Money to pay the bills of the church, bills, it's not there. People go to church all the time. They go to use the instruments. They go to use the light. They go to use everything there. When they, when they are leaving that church, because that person is a genuine man of God, and do not want to compromise his faith. You leave a, a queens in the offering bowl. Many of you leave queens, 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 queens. It is queens that you go and give us an offering. I want to go to the charlatans who pay in thousands. You think God will bless you for that? No. Many of you, God has raised you to be, assi to be assisting the genuine men of God there, out there. You are not assisting them. You are waiting for them. You are waiting for them to join the Illuminati, to join the sisterhood, to join the Freemasons, to join Mammon. Before you begin to give them, they won't have compassion for you. That is why these people, they don't have compassion. No? When they say, I will kill you, they don't care. When they start releasing curses, they don't care. They can curse you and your entire family. They don't have mercy. They can curse you and the entire family. They don't feel it. Because they see you as a heartless person. They don't see you as a child of God. That is why they dupe you and do all kinds of things against you. Some of them are sleeping with you. When they use you and dump you and you, 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 you try to come out, they will send their guys to come and kill you. They don't have mercy. They don't have compassion. Because when they were building with you on a scratch, you had it. But you did, never, you did not help them. Now that they've already sold their soul, you want them to have mercy upon you. They will not have mercy. That is the truth. That is the truth. That is the truth. Many of them, it is 10, 10, 10. <laughs> I heard one, one of these prophets in Ghana. He was saying, he watched. The watch, the wrist watch that he used is one billion Ghanaian cities. 100,000 Ghanaian cities, old currency, one billion. Yes, though, tomato sellers, that they have 200 Ghana as their capital. Every Sunday he take offering from such people. Ask yourself, why is it that they can afford to buy Rolls Royce? They can afford to buy Bentley. How much is Bentley? How much is Lamborghini? They can afford to buy Lamborghini. Yes, so no. They will come and take you pepper seller, tomato seller, onion seller. They will come and squeeze your hand. You have to book an appointment in dollars, in pounds, before you can get access to speak to them. Ask yourself that question. They don't have a good heart. Because already they know they are not doing anything to please their maker. They don't have anything to do in the kingdom of God. So their life, it is everything enjoying themselves on earth. After death, they go for torturement. They go into, 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 
hellfire they go into a place of torment a place of no repentance so they enjoy on the on, the, on this earth and many of these people have promised the devil they will never enjoy hellfire alone they will come with you many of them they have promised devil satan that they will never enjoy hellfire alone they will come with you that is why you are in their church they do not even preach to you about holy communion many of you are in churches that they don't take holy communion but it is a rare church that you go there every sunday not even once a time that your pastor is saying i want to correct people and i want us to eat with christ because holy communion any church that do not take holy communion any church i'm not talking about organizational ours is not a church it is a, an organization that we meet to pray it is a group of people that we meet to pray if it is a church we must get a man of god ordained man of god that will come and do communion service at least every every month for people to die with christ for people to have affiliation with Christ. Many churches, they do not do this. Ask yourself why they don't talk about baptism. Ask your pastor why you don't preach about baptism. Ask her why you don't talk about communion service. It is because they want to spend hellfire with you. They do not want to teach you the ways that you qualify to enter paradise. They want to spend the rest of your life, the life with you in hellfire, in a place of torment, in a place of torture. So you that is sensible with the Holy Spirit, you must be able to discern, to know where to worship, where to go, and where not to go. Because Jesus Christ promised us, Matthew chapter 24, Matthew 24, share the broadcast for me. Please share the broadcast for me. Please share the broadcast. Matthew chapter number 24. If you have not shared, do well to share the broadcast for me right now. Everybody, I want you to click on the share button. I want you to click on the share button. Yes. Everybody, click on the share button. Share the broadcast for me right now. Share the broadcast for me right now. Everybody, click on the share button and share for me right now. Yes, yeah, share for me right now. Share for me right now. Share for me right now. Matthew chapter number 24. Matthew 24. Let me read a scripture to you. Matthew chapter number 24. Matthew 24. Share the broadcast, everybody. Share the broadcast for me. Matthew chapter number 24. The verse number 4. And I proceed from the verse 11 to 12. It says, And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed. That no man deceives you. Jesus answered and said, Take heed that no man, he didn't say no devil, no man deceives you. That means many people will come, many men will come to deceive others. Many men will come to deceive others. And they will not come with a scary face for you to know that they look so scary, they look so disgusting. No. They will come with ordinary man's face. They will dress in their suits. They will dress, put on everything that every sensible man do. But within their hearts, they are in for a purpose. They are in for a purpose. This is the words from the mouth of Jesus Christ. Matthew 24 verse 11. It said, and many false prophets shall rise. And shall deceive many. He has explained it well. Many false prophets shall rise. And they shall deceive many. When we talk about false prophets. Many of you. What they portray to you. Because you are unmatured in Christ. You can't descend to know that they are false or their truth. Because they look like red sheep. <laughs> in your sight. They look like red sheep. They look like red men of God. They advise all right. It's like they, they, they are preaching. It touches your heart. Am I lying? Remember they were once called. Some of them were evangelists. Standing on the wayside preaching. Before they got in contact with. One of these charlatans who introduced them. Who took them to Benin. Hmm? 
took them to Nigeria, took them to South Africa, took them to India, to initiate them for them to stop the preaching. So sometimes when they stand and they want to preach because they've been preaching, because I've been preaching, sometimes I don't even open the Bible, but I'm able to preach. Because I have been preaching for long, I do not open the Bible, but I'm able to preach. So the same thing, these people, they will preach and it will touch your heart. They will take out your problem to speak to you and it will touch your heart. They are helping people, healing people, commanding the cripple to rise, but they are not of God. That is why the book of Matthew chapter number 7, verses number 21, Jesus Christ was speaking. He said on that day, I will tell many people, depart from me. I know you not. You worker of iniquity. You that did not do what is right. And the people will say, Lord, Lord, didn't I use your name to resurrect the deaf? Didn't I use your name to heal the cripple? Didn't I use your name to heal the sick person? And he will say, depart from me. I know you not. You worker of iniquity. This signifies that really they are doing the work of God. But they are twisting it. They don't do it fully. They don't show you the right thing. They don't show you the way. They redirect you to something else. That is why many of you, your puppets and your mamas, they have all kinds of items that they are selling. They redirect you, your mind from Christ. Look at those things. So instead of you looking for the power in Christ Jesus, you are looking for miracle water. Instead of you looking for the power, the healing in the name of Jesus Christ, you are looking for anointing oil. You are looking for a sticker. You are looking for your papa's t-shirt. T-shirt with your papa's name. Pant with your papa's face. Yes. Blah with your papa's face. Yes. Many of you, if you go for stickers and praise on your womanhood, Claiming when you place it on your womanhood, that man that has been coming to sleep with you will not come again. Ignorance. The Bible says lack of knowledge. My people perish. Wake up. Seek the right power in God. Seek the truth. Draw closer to God. There is no salvation in any of these things. Quench your heart. Stop sinning. Stop sinning. If you are righteous, we pray for you once, and the door opens. You walk in that open doors. You go through. The devil cannot shut it. Because God Almighty said, I will place the door in front of you. That no man can shut it. The devil tried to shut it. But because it wasn't opened by devil, or it wasn't opened by you, but it was opened by your father, the devil cannot shut it. Many of you, we are praying, 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 but secretly you are sinning, so the prayers don't work. Many of you, we are killing ourselves to fast and pray for you, but within your heart, you know you are armed robber, stealing in your working place. How can the prayers work? Many of you, we are killing ourselves to fast and pray for you. Meanwhile, you are a married woman, you are cheating with another man. How can the prayers work for you? So when you go to these charlatans, because they do not want to waste their energy, will charge you huge amounts when you pay one you will not go there to disturb them again because you yourself you are not ready to live righteous you yourself you are not ready to invite the holy spirit into your life you yourself you are not ready to walk according to the ways of god you are not ready to receive anything good from the kingdom of god you want to harbor the, the good thing on, on, on that filthy thing that you are keeping in your heart god doesn't work that way oh. god does not work in that way before God will bless you. Yesterday, I was teaching one of our sisters. She's a beginner in Christ. She was a Muslim that have come to Christ. And she sent me a message and said, Mommy, I want to know the steps. How can I grow? Because I just heard your testimony. I've been following, following you on YouTube. I saw your message on YouTube. And the message really touches my heart. I want to know how. I can come out of the world as we are able to come out of the world. So I have to take her through the six steps. The six steps 
of knowing God. We have six, six steps of knowing God. Hallelujah. The first steps of the process of knowing God. The first dimension is to have an encounter. An encounter as I had. The first direction, the first process, the first dimension is to have an encounter. How do we have an encounter? It's when you receive God into your heart. When you come out with a broken heart and begin to cry to God and say, I want to know you well. Reveal yourself to me as you revealed yourself to Apostle Paul. I want to know you well. Reveal yourself to me as you revealed yourself to the ancient pious men and women. Reveal yourself. That is how you had an encounter. God will appear to you in your dream. He will appear to you in a trance. He will appear to you in a vision. You can meet him physically as Paul had that physical encounter. As many of us had that physical encounter. That encounter, after that encounter, it will lead to revelations. That is where God will visit you to tell you, from today, do not dress like this. As a man, from today, do not go and sleep with that lady that you are sleeping with every night. Do not go to that house again. That encounter will lead to revelation. And that revelation, God will reveal himself to you. Sometimes he will come to you as a familiar family member. Sometimes he will come to you as a stranger that you do not know anywhere. Sometimes, sometimes he will come to you as somebody that you know. That revelation, revelation, what he will teach you, what he will tell you, the things that he will show you in your revelation, it will bring conviction. That is why the other time I was telling you, I, there is not any man of God that came to preach for me to repent. I quite remember those days when I, I am with my short hand walking in the street, walking in the street of Ghana, Kumasi, and I see the street preachers. As soon as they see me, they, they tend their preaching. Because that time I have breached my skin with my long, hairy hands, with my shade, with my white foot, my white top, with my short pant that does not reach my knee. As soon as I cross where they are preaching, their messages change. And they say, you die as a sinner. Don't die as a fornicator. I say, shut up. Some of them, I will stand in front of them and I say, shut up. Because that time, the devil have hardened my heart. But when I had that encounter and I started having a series of revelation, that revelation brings about conviction. It brought a conviction onto my life. The Lord convicted me. He showed me what to wear and what not to wear. He showed me what to do and what not to do. He showed me some things to reply and some things not to reply. Because those days I was a fighter. I would come and fight you. I don't care. I have shared that testimony to you. That I don't care fighting you. I don't care coming to your home to beat you. I will come to your home to beat you. Pull all your, your, your hair. And you will come and arrest me. Yes. So all this the conviction... The revelation brought about conviction. I, I knew how to dress well. I knew the cream to apply it and the cream not to apply it. Those days I was using papaya and all these bleaching products. I was missing all kinds of milk and all these things just to look like a white person. All these things I was doing. But the Lord God Almighty came into my dream, reveal all the things that I was doing that he did not like. And as I obeyed and stopped, I've been telling you for the past seven years, I've been using cocoa butter, Vaseline. Cocoa butter, Vaseline. The other time I showed to you, and lost shower gel. That is the two products I've been using for seven years. Cocoa butter, Vaseline, and lost shower gel. That is the product. I don't change it. I've been repeating, repeating till now. But those days, you found papaya. You found all breaching creams, all facial creams, a lot of things. 
And Lord God Almighty, through the revelation, it brought a conviction in my life. And the, and the conviction, it made me have faith in God. So the conviction will draw your faith in Christ. You will have faith in him that nothing can change you. Nothing can make you stop loving God. It will plant a faith, a seed of faith in your heart. Seed of faith in your heart. And that faith will produce actions of obedience. Because you have faith in him. When he says sleep at 12 o'clock, you sleep. When he says wake up, you wake up. When he says do this, you do this. And that is true that all the time obeying his voice is what will make you grow from 30% Christian to 60% and later to 100% to receive your crown to fit the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Let me read our last Bible verse as you were reading and I bring my message to an end. We are reading Matthew chapter number 24 verse 11. To 13, listening to the word of God. Matthew 24, verses number 11 to 13. It says, And many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Say, enduring unto the end. Enduring unto the end. Sustainability. Many people can receive Christ today, walk in the holiness of God for 10 years, and they will backslide in the 11th year. I know many people, when they started, I tell you, the, the zeal for Christ was, it was, it, it, it was so higher. Now, even preaching is difficult for them. Preaching about Christ is difficult for them. The fire has been quenched. Sustainability. He said those that will be able to endure to the end, they shall be saved. Enduring to the end. The book of Revelation chapter 9. Revelation chapter 9. Let me read the scripture to you. Mm. Revelation chapter 9. Mm. Let me read from verse 1. It said, and the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth. And to heaven was given the key of the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit. And there arose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by reasons of the smoke of the pits. And there came out of the smoke locust upon the earth. And upon them were given power as the scorpions of the earth have power. Listen. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the glass of the earth. Neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God on their forehead. The right, the key word here is the seal of God. Somebody may ask, what is the seal of God? The Bible is talking about something that will come upon the earth of man. There are so many messages when you preach on Facebook, they will, they will, they will block you, they will not allow you. So we can't go deep. But we will miss it. <laughs> Whatever we find ourselves, you will miss that messages. It's talking about something that will come on earth. A locust that will come on earth. A locust that they have the face of a woman. That they are bite. When they bite you, it's, it's, it's like earthly scorpion. The pains of an earthly scorpion biting you. And the Bible said they've given them authority and audacity not to chew any herbs. You know locusts are interested in destroying our farm. Our farm products. The herbs. They will chew the cocoa yam leaves, the potato leaves, so that the, the potato will wither. But these locusts, they are specially designed that they shouldn't eat any herb, they shouldn't attack any plant. But the people without the seal of the holy, the seal of God, 
when we talk about the seal of God, I started by telling you, those that do not have the spirit of God, they are not of God. So those that do not have the Holy Spirit, they do not have the seal of God. They are the people that these animals, these locals, when they come on earth, they are going to devour them. Hallelujah. When you read the verse number 5, Revelation 9, 5, it says, and to them it was given that they should not kill them, but they should be tormented five months. Mm. Five months, and their torment was as the torment of scorpion when he strike a man. Their torment is like a torment of a scorpion when he strike a man. And these locals are going to operate five months non-stop. Five months non-stop. Listen to what follows. It says, and in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it and shall desire to die and death shall flee from them. The reason why I told you there are so many things to come before 666. This thing will happen before 666. The locusts, Revelation chapter 9 will come before Revelation 13. Where people will find, people will pray that God let me die, but God will say, mm -mm, it is not time. The messenger of death will not be operating at that season. Death will not be where. It will not be anywhere. When you climb on top of a tree, that locust will come there and torment you. When you fly high in the plane, that locust will chase you there. They will pursue you there. Inside the plane, when you try to fall from the plane to come down, they will come down with you since they have feathers. They have wings. Let me read to describe how these locusts, locusts how they look like. The first number says seven. It says, and the shape of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle. And on their head were as, as were clowns like gold. And their face were the face of men. And they, hair, they, they had hair as the hair of women. And their teeth were as the teeth of lions. They have long hair. Locusts with long hair. With the teeth of a lion. With the face of a man. Have you seen these images anywhere on Google? Have you anywhere seen any of these images? Though we have seen the image in Revelation 13, in the UN, the statue there, it depicts Revelation 13. But this locust, have you seen the image anywhere? That is why I tell you, don't let anybody deceive you. Do not let anybody deceive you. We are heading towards the, the era of sorrows. We are in the sorrowful era where nations will rise against nations. Matthew 24. Cities will rise against cities. There is going to be earthquake and pestilence in diverse places. Jesus Christ assured us that we should not let any of these things trouble us. We shouldn't let any of these things. Now we are seeing pestilence. Ally, put your hand in Revelation chapter 9. We will come back. Let's go to Matthew 24. I wanted to end, but let me explain some things for you to understand. Let's go to Matthew 24 and read what Jesus Christ told us. Don't get tired with the word of God. Do not get tired. Hallelujah. Matthew 24. I read from the first number one. And, say, and Jesus went out and departed from the temple and his disciples came to him for to shew him the building of the temple and Jesus said unto them see ye not all these things very I say unto you there shall not be left here one stone upon another stone that shall not be thrown down he was talking about the temple New Jalu the Jerusalem temple that was the prophecy Jesus was prophesying now they destroy it it is left at war the wailing war the, that war is what is left it was a very big temple Hallelujah. I think it has been destroyed three or four times. The first person to destroy was King Nebuchadnezzar. When he took captive of the Israels, Jeremiah chapter 33 to the verse number 44, it talks about that, 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 that redeem. That redeem, yes. And King Herod the Great came and built it. After the death of Jesus Christ, there was war, they broke it down again. So Jesus Christ was prophesying about what is about to happen to that temple. That is what we have read now. 
the first number four he said and jesus answered and said unto them take heed that no man deceives you for many shall come in my name saying i am christ and shall deceive many and ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars don't we hear wars and rumors of wars mm. we've been hearing wars and rumors of wars see that ye be not troubled he said when you hear all these things do not be troubled for all these things must come to pass but the end is not yet repeat after me the end is not yet when we see all these things the reason why i'm mad and i'm I, 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 i'm against those false teachers and false holiness that i saying jesus is coming tomorrow so those that are working have stopped working they don't read the bible when they study the bible they will know that the end is not yet as Jesus Christ said, this is the, the words from the mouth of Jesus. So he said, The end is not yet. First, said, He said, For nations will rise against nations, and kingdoms against kingdoms, and there shall be famines, and pestilence, and earthquake in diverse places. Don't we hear earthquake in diverse places? Don't we hear famine in diverse places? Don't we hear wars in diverse places? Recently, See what happened. Afghanistan. See what was happening there. Recently, Israel and Hamas. See what was happening there. It is spiritualized. God said we will hear all these things happening in diverse places. Earthquake made mention, mention the name, the cities that experienced earthquake in the year 2021. All these things must happen. It must all come to pass, but the end has not come. That is the truth. The verse number eight is said, All these are the beginning of solos. Then shall they deliver up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. He was talking about the disciples. The book of Acts, chapter 8, Stephen who was owned for the name's sake. For the name's sake. Peter was, he was crucified. They hung him. They hung Peter. Simon Peter, they hung him. The head was down, the legs were up. They did all these things against them. Apostle Paul, he was in prison for ages. Jesus was prophesying about what will happen to his disciples. After he's gone, when he spoke these words, he was still on earth. He was still eating as a man on earth before the final day that he ascended unto heaven. Hallelujah. Let's read so that you know how. When somebody is deceived, you don't let anybody deceive you. Don't let anybody put fear in you. Don't let anybody terrify you. Don't let anybody say because you've taken an uh, injection, uh, your, your DNA has changed. Nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. And I want to assure you, if this thing says, says, says it's in injection, we've already, re we've already taken it. If it is, if you are going to receive it through injection, I tell you, we and our children, we've already taken it, so don't worry. Ask yourself, many of you, when you give birth to your children and you take their children to weigh them, don't they put that injection on their shoulder? Everybody that have traveled before from Africa to Europe, from Africa to United Kingdom, from Africa to United States of America, didn't you take that, that, that yellow fever vaccine? Uh uh, is it no vaccine? Is it no vaccine? Where is it written that this thing is going to be in vaccine? It's not. Pestilence will come. And this is the pestilence that Jesus Christ was talking about. A global plague. He was saying pestilence and war will come. But you shouldn't trouble. You shouldn't trouble. Verse number 11. And now he moved to talk about the end time. False prophets, he said, and many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Because iniquity shall abound. Now young men are killing small, small children because they want to ride Range Rover. 
Sakawa boys are killing their girlfriends. They are girlfriends because they want to ride Bentley. Cafe boys are sleeping in caskets because they want to be known. Iniquity shall abound. Iniquity shall abound. Now when you are even there with your father, you fear. Because some fathers are using their children, they are sacrificing their children for fame. Some fathers, some radio presenters, TV presenters are sacrificing their children just to be known by the world. Just for fame. So Jesus Christ made this prophecy. He said, iniquity shall abound. Iniquity shall abound. And many, many people, many of the people, our love was cold. Our love for God is now. Now when you don't have money, they don't respect you. When you don't ride a good car, they don't respect you. People are being recognized by the car they ride. So the love for God has was cold. Living righteousness in our days has, 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 has traveled out of the mind of many people. It is all money. It is all money. Jesus spoke about it, about the end time. He said, but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Say, and the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. The gospel shall be preached. The gospel shall be preached. Now, wherever you are, they are preaching the gospel. Wherever we are, we are preaching the gospel. Say it shall be preached as a witness. So you can't say, Lord, I didn't hear the truth. All over the media, people are preaching. The gospel shall be preached. It is up to you to work on your salvation. Listen to one thing that I want to explain and I bring my message to an end. The verse number 15. It said, when ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, who so that let him understand. The abomination of desolation. Now many churches have legalized gays. Man and man, men and men, women and women, they hold their hand to go and stand in the holy place to make a vow to God that they are marrying. When people see them, they should call them Mr. and Mrs. They shouldn't call them, oh, brother or brother. No. Brother and sister. He said, when we see all these things in the holy place, we should understand that we are heading nearer the end time. We are heading nearer the end time. The women have married women and they are boasting. Women have married their fellow women and they are boasting. They are happy. They are legally married. They are adopting children. Men have married men. Filthiness. Abomination of desolation. They say don't talk about it. They have their rights. That is what the, 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 the community is preaching in the ears of them. They have their rights. Man have married animal in the pulpit. They went before a pastor. The pastor blesses abomination of desolation. He said, when you see it, let the person reading it as you are reading begin to understand that we are heading towards it. He said, when we see all these things, then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountain. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of the house. Do you know the reason why when I heard people running away from Saudi Arabia, running away, where people say, all Africans, go back to your country. The Lord is saying, all Africans, go. And something bad is happening. That's going to happen. Do you know I didn't run? Do you know the reason I didn't go back to Ghana? This scripture. God said, when such thing happen, whatever you are, don't run. If you are in the bush, remain there. If you are on top of the building, remain there. If you are in the market, don't run home. Whenever this incident will happen, whenever it will meet you, if you're in the farm, don't go, don't, don't think of running to your house. Be there. Be still and see whatever that will come at the end. 
That is the reason why many of us, we are not thinking of going back to our country. Mm -mm. Because we want to see the end. He said, don't run. So if you study the Bible, you will not say God is saying you run away from uh, uh, Germany to Nigeria. Run away. Pack your things from UK to Ghana. You don't read your scripture. And that is the truth that you people, you don't want us to tell you. That is the real truth. That is the real truth. So don't go back. Don't go back. Do not go back. It's part time. We all work on our salvation. Draw closer to God. This is not the time for you to put your trust in any objects. This is not the time for you to put your trust in even me. Don't trust me. I'm a messenger. Trust your maker. Put your trust in God. Have connection with God to the extent that in times of difficulties, you can say, you can scream and say, Father, here I come. What do you have for me? Father, here I am. What do you want me to do? Where should I go? Father, how do I escape? Have connection with God. Because when this COVID started, we discovered that man is limited. Your pastors were nowhere to be found. Your, your, your prophet, one prophet, two, your lady reverence, your, your prophetess, your archbishops, they were all nowhere to be found. When this COVID came, their water was useless. Their stickers were useless. Their bundles were useless. God made all these things useless to speak to you that there is no power, there is no salvation in any of these things. And God say, I'm striking the earth. It is only those that have the seal of the Holy Spirit. They can survive. When God say, I am going to destroy the earth, it is only those that have the seal of the Holy Spirit. Only these people can survive. It is only those that their name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Only these people can survive. It is not those that are churchgoers. Many of you, you are churchgoers, but you don't have relationship with God. Many of you go to church, all right. But at the, at the, the day, God will tell you, depart from me. I know you not. The book of Revelation 21 verse 8, it says, But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and warmongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burned with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. This is where you have your share. This is where you have your portion. You will have your portion in these places. Where will you spend eternity? Where will you spend eternity? If you are crossing the road and you die today, where will your soul be? With your bad attitude, where will you be? With this evil heart, a stone heart, a heart of stone, a heart of unforgiving, a heart of immorality, a heart that lasted for a fellow man, a heart that lasted for a fellow woman, where will you be? Where will you be? Well, ask yourself, where will I be? If I'm crossing the road today and I die, where will my soul be? I'm a stranger on earth. When I die today, where will I spend eternity? Hebrews 9.27 It says it's appointed for a man to die once and after death there is judgment. Remember there is judgment. Remember there is an accountability. Remember when you die, you not go with your, your, your precious pearls. You not go with your gold. You not go with your diamond. You not go with your, your expensive luxury apartment. You will not go with your luxury cars. It is utterly things. Naked you came. Naked you shall go. What does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? What does it profit a man if the man gains the whole world and loses his soul? Today when I was just checking, I said, oh, all those fake men of God that sacrificed their souls and got money in their account and got fame, got a church building, that now they are dead leaving the property unto their wife. If their deeds, if their deeds didn't please God, do you know by now they are crying? How their wife will marry again <laughs> and spend the money with another man? Don't be a fool if you're a man of God listening to me. Don't be a fool. Do not go and sacrifice your soul. Your fellow man will come and chop your wife 
and chop your money. Take dominion over your household. Some of them will even drive away your children. And because your wife loves him, that is it. You'll be crying in your grave if you could have eyes to see. You'll be shedding tears in your grave, but it will be too late. Do not sacrifice your soul. Don't sacrifice your soul for anything. Do not sacrifice your soul for anything. Live right off in every situation. The apostle said, Romans chapter 8, verse 31 to 32, what shall separate us from the love of Christ? Is it famine? Is it hunger? Is it pain? Is it difficulties? Is it poverty? Is this sickness? What is separating you from Christ? Come back to him. Come back to him. What has separated you from your maker? Come back to him. He is calling you today. He is calling you today. Standing at the back of your heart. Calling. Calling you. Walk out of it. Walk out of everything that you have adopted. And run to Christ. For he alone. You will get salvation. Psalm 91. Say those that dwell in the secret place. Of the most high. Shall abide under the shadows of the almighty. Those that will dwell under the secret place. I know it is painful. I know it is difficult. Hardship is there. Financial difficulties are there. But dwell under there. And God Almighty will bless you. God Almighty will preserve you. May God bless you. May he plant his words in your heart. May he lead you in everything you do. Where to go and where not to go. May he speak to your heart. So that at the end, you qualify for the kingdom. God bless you. Tonight, if chance is on our side, we'll meet for midnight prayers. God bless you. If you want to give us data to share the word of God, I will send you. Just send me a message on WhatsApp. I will send you the link. You can do it through PayPal. You can do it through PayPal. You can do it through any means that you want to give us data. Give us data to teach the message and also to preach the message. God bless you. My WhatsApp number is plus two three three five four four nine four seven two seven three. Plus two three three five four four nine four seven two seven three. Once again, my name is Precious Appear Gifty. You can call me the Lioness Preacher. God bless you. Meet you in some few hours. I think we are left at three hours to start. You meet for midnight prayers. Yes. We meet for midnight prayers tonight. We are going to meet 10.45 p.m. UK time. 10.45 p.m. UK time. 10.45 p.m. UK time. 5.45 p.m. New York time. If you are in New York, it is 5.45. If you are in UK, it is 10.45. Germany is 11. Germany is 11. God bless you. Love you all. Meet you there. Shalom.